In this video I will make a cheap gaming PC by installing a graphics card and SSD into this Dell Optiplex 7010 without the need of changing the power supply. The previous owner has broken the rubber grommets holding the rear exhaust fan so I will replace them. The CPU heatsink was very dirty so it needed cleaning. Also the thermal paste on the CPU was very dry so that needed replacing too. The CPU on this PC is i5-3570 so that doesn't need to be replaced for this build because the GPUs I will try on this will probably not be bottlenecked by this too much. If you will move the PC around at this point, don't leave the CPU fan hanging there freely. It can damage the LGA pins on the MOBO. First graphics card I'm going to install is 1050 Ti. This version does not have 6 pin power connector. This card is also used so just to be sure I took it apart and put in new thermal paste. After reassembling the card I put the CPU back and applied new thermal paste. While I am using the stock CPU in this video I will be making another video where I will upgrade the CPU and also put a better GPU in. I will probably be testing some Ivy Bridge Xeons. The PC had some old PCIe card possibly for printer installed but I won't be needing that. The problem with these PCs can be that the SATA ports and also the USB front panel header on the motherboard will be blocked by the GPU if a long enough card is installed. However both of the cards that I am testing in this video fit one of them fits with four SATA ports accessible one fits leaving only three. Some of the blocked SATA ports can be used with angled connectors. This is a dead generic SSD. I will be swapping the board inside for a working SSD PCB to get a working boot drive. These bare PCB SSDs can be got for quite cheap on either eBay or AliExpress. However, especially if the data which will be stored on this PC is anything important, I would recommend always to use reputable brands. The PCB fits inside the broken SSD's enclosure somehow but not perfectly. I mounted the SSD in the front of the PC. In here it will probably not impede airflow very much. The PC doesn't have any intake fans by default and so I installed one intake fan on the side panel mesh. The fan worked okay like 
that but it isn't speed controlled fan it's only molex powered so it was on full the whole time and it was quite noisy i ended up changing it from 12 volts to 5 volts which made it much quieter obviously if you tamper with molex or other power cables always have them disconnected from the pc and remember to swap both ends of the cable maximum power draw of the pc when running prime 95 and msi combustor was 172 watts this means that the rx 470 i mean to test with this pc cannot be used with the stock psu I will instead test RX 560. I will install this GPU first, then I'll show some benchmarks from both of these GPU. This version of RX 560 has a 6 pin power connector. I know there are both 1050 Ti's and 560's which do not need 6 pin power it would be more fair comparison than but these cards are what i currently have the stock psu does not have 6 pin power but it can be converted from a seda power in that case one seda needs to be split to still get power to all accessories for benchmarking i am using different ssd which already has benchmarks installed again running prime 95 and combustor at the same time gives power reading of 188 watts this rx 560 seems to not require unlocking for some more cpu performance i disabled spectre and meltdown protection with in spectre these are fire strike scores for both of the gpus upper one is for the 1050 ti 1050 ti seems to run around 10 degrees cooler than the rx 560. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, CPU is bottlenecking both of the GPUs, especially in city areas. Removing shadows removes some of the load from CPU, but the game is still clearly CPU bottleneck. Running the benchmarks with these settings gave surprising results in that rx560 actually scored better though it probably is caused by both of them being cpu bottleneck in f1 2018 the results are very different neither of the cards is cpu bottleneck and the 1050i is actually giving noticeably better results however the game is well playable with both of the gpus last i run the gta 5 benchmark i expected the nvidia card to win this one but the results are actually interesting while the 1050 ti scores better average fps the rx 560 has more stable fps with higher minimums 
I also installed a front panel which contains USB-C and various memory card slots. This front panel requires one USB 3 header which isn't available on the motherboard but it can be added with a PCIe card. It also requires USB 2 but there is USB 2 header on the motherboard. For the eSATA port you need to have one free SATA. I have also this other 7010 which I will be upgrading even further than this one in another video.